Are we ready to get started? Let's do it. Let's do it. See if we can get her done. Um, the warrants are circulating for signature. And is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? I'm sorry, do you have, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, my name is um, Paige McGarren. I'm oh, okay. on the corner of the Okay, yeah, you sent me the email. Yeah. yeah, okay. And Jordan Keys. He is my son. Oh, okay. The whole family's here. How cool is that? Part of them. <laughs> cool is that? Um, do we have any additions or changes to the agenda? All right, now we just wait for Alfred. Well, maybe we should do something else. Um, I was going to say, why don't we do minutes? Um, Katie, okay, the minutes. You guys got to go back. Um, all right. I reviewed um, the minutes. And I had a couple of edits. Katie, did you see them? Yes. Okay, so we're ahead of schedule already, John. Really? Want me to go out again? No, no, no. <laughs> I go so get the meeting done. <laughs> I'm just taking a couple of things out of order that um, we can do that won't affect anything else. So I've been known to be out of order. Yes, you have been. Okay. I can attest to that. <laughs> oh, I know. There's on page two, Katie, second to last, second to last paragraph from the bottom has folks having and i tried to re reward it a little bit thank you okay so i would make a motion that we approve the minutes with the changes as noted um well done katie as always thank you thank you um all right all those in favor please say aye aye all right Okay, those Aye. are approved. Um, what else would you like to do that doesn't require? It probably doesn't require much of anything. We could sign the um, Brookfield's annual service agreement. Sign the MOU. Do you think anybody from the? the no, no, they asked me, and I said that they didn't need to come. Oh shoot! Now I lost all the documents, Katie. That's okay. Um, why don't you go back to the screen share button? Um, yeah. I'm in there. Select a window or application that you want to share. I lost Wi-Fi. Denise, you might need to reopen that internet browser. Like go back to Google Chrome to open it again, maybe? I think we lost Wi-Fi here. I just yeah. Did too. We turned up too much bandwidth. Actually, well, when everybody has their computers and stuff on it, it chews up space. Okay, where do I want to go, Katie? Been. I think you might need to reopen the internet browser. Google Chrome. So Google maybe? Chrome. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because Gmail went away. Uh huh. Um, Katie, do you have Grace Vinson's email address? Her email address. Let me check. I'll, um, I'll forward to you her email saying that she can't get in. The passcode isn't working. Thank you. Can you forward it to me and I'll help her? Yep. No, I wonder no, if yeah. she tried the exact minute that Wi-Fi went down, maybe. Probably. I'll message her, Denise, if you forward that over. Thank you. All right, now let me try to get back into the documents. Technology, gotta love it. Okay, let's do the MOU. I think this is the one with all the changes incorporated. It correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did bring a hard copy so that we could sign it. 
Yes. I have one here if you don't. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay, so I would make a motion to approve the revised MOU. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right, I'll send it. Yep. I'll send it around for signature now. I just got recording in progress. There was three eyes and one abstain, Katie, in case you didn't hear. Thank you. All right, now I want to be able to minimize the participants on Zoom so I can see the agenda or the document and see Zoom at the same time. Um, no, I want to be able to make it work here. So, Katie, how do I get this to let me see? How do I move the, oh, the view box over? How do I move this? That's view right. Box? Here's Grace getting into the meeting. Denise, I think right. you want to set the view for Zoom how you like it. And then do the screen share to open up the document you want to share again. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Looks good. All right. So we approved the MOU. Mark has abstained. I'll send this around for signature. And then um, we agreed that once the Curtis Pond Dam Association signs off, it's done. it's done and we will get an original back. Would you like to sign that? Mm -hmm. Okay, what else can we do? Um, I know we can do <laughs> an FY23 budget. Um, last year, in prior years, we would all meet on Monday evenings or Saturdays, and it would take us about five or six meetings. Last year, um, Cliff and I met several times and then brought information and versions of the budget development <clears throat> document back to the board. And John, you can speak for yourself, but didn't that process go fairly well? Saved a lot of meetings, a lot of time. Yeah, well, as a guy who doesn't like to go too many Saturday meetings before Christmas. I think it was great. Um, so why don't we do the same thing? And uh, so, uh, we'll just read it again. so maybe we can get uh, Rick to resign his position at Cliff be appointed back. Is that what you're <laughs> suggesting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I know I, I, I don't want to be point person on that but maybe mark does and if you'd willing to work with mark denise that would yep. be great i think that'd that be something that's mark, that an option for you yeah and this gives also gives mark an opportunity to learn that's what i'm doing about right. the budget yeah, I'm and the process and and i have to say i looked up the just for he's an old dog can he be taught that's the question he's he's ready for not. Not. Um, mm -hmm. um so Plus, is that a motion john <laughs> I can make it a motion, sure. I, I move that uh, the select board appoint Denise Wheeler and Mark Mahali uh, to be our point folks to put together a preliminary budget and uh, to present to the select, full select board for our consideration and augmentation or whatever. Okay. Is there a second? second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, and I did just out of for ha, I looked up the CPI for the Northeast region on November 1st, 5.9. Boy, I, I, I'm really amazed by that. I brought um, copies of what I looked up for you guys to look at. Yeah. I was surprised, but you know, Social Security, my husband gets Social Security and they sent him a, an announcement that they're upping his Social Security by 5.9%. Oh, I thought there was a cap. Wow, they're doing the full tilt, full yeah. amount. I'm happy to hear that. Actually, I've uh, been doing work around the house and I uh, purchased some two inch uh, foam board, you know, exterior grade foam board for insulation. We buried up some a water line 
And I looked at uh, old receipts and new receipts. And in 2000, 2003, I bought the um, two foot pieces of foam board for foundation insulation. And it cost $5 for a two by four sheet. Those sheets are now $30. How much was it? What? Those two by two by four sheets are 30. You can get a four by eight sheet, which can be broken in half for $40. But how much so the two, but the two by four sheets are 30. They were $5 in 2002. Mm -hmm. So in, in 19 oh, wow. years, they've gone up six fold now. Has everyone's salary here gone up sixfold? Not last time I checked. Uh, you know, I'd be I'd be in the money, man. I'd be making exactly. like wow. three hundred thousand dollars now. Well, year. Romex is the same thing. It's more than twice what it was. It's yeah, like it's it's, it's out of control. I don't know. I, don't I, I, I fear retirement. I guess oh, you're yeah. not going to be able to. Um, Rick, do you think we need to? Do you want to wait for Alfred yes, to talk about the? Road contingency plan, or can we get started on that? Let's wait for him. He's yeah, for that. Yeah, um, how about um, can how we? About the, um, how about the EMFD? No, no we have we need, in like two minutes. I think we can do Brookfield. That's just the annual service contract renewal, okay. and we've been using them for years. And it used to be we would do the school and the town. At the same time, but we separated out now that the school has their own contract with Brookfield for maintenance of that generator. And the maintenance agreement that we typically use is the two visits a year. Um, and if we pay this by November 20th, we can get a discount so that it's $954 instead of $1,004. So I would recommend that we do the the two visits a year and get Sandra to pay this by the 20th. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you need a resolution? You need a motion. Motion. So moved. And second. Okay. And did you get that, Katie? To all in favor? Just a minute. Okay. Um, and would you authorize me to sign this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Alfred's right on time. Hey, Alfred. Hey, Alfred. Yeah. Hey. All right. Nice job supporting local businesses at Seabuck, Grass Seed, and Plainfield Hardware. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good. For sure. Yeah, they support the locals. Yeah, try to. Good. Yeah. Good. I like that. All right. So you're up, Alfred. Thank you. Roads contingency plan. How's that going? Uh, it's going. It's, I don't really have much to present tonight. Uh, a couple of things I can add to it was um, putting up a little extra pile of gravel for if we have one that is treated. Yeah, what is the what is the prediction? I heard we might 60s get 60s tomorrow. Their long range is that they're warm. Is they're predicting. At least average, probably above average precipitation. What point you don't know. Also, warmer weather through the next year. You know, so oh, okay. so right. it's, so we yeah, around the right. So right, we're going to get the freeze, the thaw, freeze the month season. So I'm putting up extra travel so we have it on hand. If we need it. Yeah, or I guess I'm getting. You know, I'm getting the studded snows. Yeah. Smart rules, out there. Thank you. Um. Yeah, and I guess that's that's the major thing. Uh, as far as the winter maintenance policy, you mean the road policy? The roads policy. I think if we're, I mean, I think we're going to have to look at that if mm -hmm. we do become in trouble. Because some of the times mm -hmm. is going to change. Times that we're going to be out there. Mm -hmm. um, certainly if... in the morning, we're not going to get plow. By seven o'clock, okay. I wonder if we could have if we could update the winter maintenance plan yeah. when we figure out you know what we're gonna do. We can have you know this is gonna be mm -hmm. option 
one, this is option two, if these circumstances so we just arise, we just plug them in, plug them into the existing plan so that we can post it. Two more. Oh, geez. Yeah. More coming up in there. Yeah. Um, so you, if you want to take a look at the maintenance plan and come up with some suggestions, I'm happy to come to the garage right. and sit at the computer mm -hmm. and type for you. Right. I'm not good about roads, but I know how to type. Well, I mean, that's a policy, right? So it would have to be changed. Well, yeah, the board would have to do it, but we can come up with it. We can just redraft it. We would just have a new, we would just have a draft to present to the board. Yeah. Well, you can even have just a handwritten. Yeah. It's going to be all in a while. That's just normal. So that's more. Or if you have, like um, Rick just said, if you want to handwrite stuff on there, I'm happy to. Right. Take it and know, plug it in. Retype, retype it. Sure. We can do it in the word. Doc. I'm sorry, I don't. We had already started the meeting and I was asked if there was public comments for things not on the agenda. Are you here for a specific item? I'm here to support Alfie. And, and apparently, you guys are going to be talking about uh, the uh, intersection between the Apple Hill and the Cemetery Road. Great. The color. The color. The color. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So you'll get back to me if you need to call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have to do. Um, any bites on the jobs? I have two applicants. Two applicants. Yay. One I'm really excited about, one not so much. People, uh, are they people that you know? We don't, you don't have to tell us who right now. Right. One of them I do know and one I do not. Okay. Um, but I'm going to schedule four weeks soon. Okay. Um, Great. One of them can't come until. Uh, around Thanksgiving. Well, that's not that far away. Right. And do they days. both have CDLs? Yeah, they're all, both of them are CDL. One of them has plowing experience, municipal experience. Yeah. Uh, great. Different state, but nevertheless, we've got uh, a lot of the criteria that will yeah. be suited for us. Good, good. So uh, he needs to relocate, um, but that's all things that we're going to work out. Okay, very good. Hopefully, work. That's good news. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, and that will relieve a lot of pressure. Yeah, for us. sure. Will it, uh, it have, will it take long to get them up to speed? People have come in. Uh, well, yes, yes, and no. I mean, one of them's got some experience, but he doesn't know our roads. Doesn't have plowing experience, but he does know our roads. So, uh, so it'll take some time for sure. Well, but at least it, there's a positive. You put them both in the cab. Put them in together. Right? One can direct. Well, we have two positions. One can have two positions, right? right. So, so there you I'm go. Hoping that, uh, and hopefully we can stagger them a little bit. Like the one guy that knows our roads, doesn't have plowing experience, can start almost immediately. Mm -hmm. The other one is going to be longer because he's already in, he's employed and he has to give two weeks and mm -hmm. once he knows he's hired it's two weeks so he's probably a month out. Yeah. So I won't be training two guys all at once. Right. So right. that will be helpful. Yeah. Um, now when you're doing training, do the other two help? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay, good. So it's a team effort. Great. Yeah. No, we all kind of chip in because I'm busy with other stuff so mm -hmm. I usually will send other guys with them to learn a new yeah great right. so yeah that's that's fun so no guarantees that they are gonna be in yeah, yeah, we'll see. well it's better than, right. than but it's better than what we had before which is not that's right that's yeah right. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so uh, All right, and if they and if, and if you decide to hire, let me know because we can put that sign on bonus information in writing and they can sign off on it. So, right, and you, you're clear on how that's supposed to work, yes. right? Okay, yes, yes. So um, have that, question, have that question hasn't come up with these two guys yet, mm -hmm. but it will, I'm sure. Yeah, and yeah. I'll be able to explain it more. Okay. Very good. I hope that's not why the only reason they're coming, but well, you know, it's uh, an incentive, and I, I, I asked, 
um, if any other towns were doing this. And apparently, there aren't any other towns offering an incentive. So, yay for us, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I will be able to fill in that. Good. Very good. Excellent. So, stay tuned on that. I think, mm -hmm. I think that in the position we're in, if I feel comfortable. Uh, at the interview, I'm just going to pull the trigger. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're the yeah, hiring manager. Just don't do it unless you have that. Yeah, you're the hiring manager. Do they have to pass a background? No, no yeah. background test. Just, just the CDL. Just drug screening. Drug screening, that's fine. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking one of my other hats we have to have a background test. Yeah, right, right. You ever do it like an alcohol? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, during, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we have well, a, random, they, a random schedule. From, so. Right. And you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And they do it that way, just on purpose, random. So. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, that's what you want. All right. All right. Are we ready to do the curve cutters or anything more on that? I don't think good. Okay. You've um, looked at the curve cutter, have you? Now this, is this is the Benjamin Uris one yeah. on yeah. Foster Hill. Um, and you met on, I, I redesigned. With Benjamin there. Folks, I redesigned our mm -hmm. approval form. So we have little check boxes. Okay, great. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So one, okay, so yes, the road commissioner has inspected the site. Can you tell me, do you know what day you did it? Or roughly? Uh, it would have been last week. Let's see, the fifth was Friday. Wednesday. Fourth, the third. Sure. The first was Monday. So 11 3. 11 3. Let's say that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And is a culvert required? There is. About 15 inch. And there's a tree that's questionable whether it should come down or not. And who is going to make that decision? Or did you get Neil to come and look? I uh, didn't get Neil to look I because he wasn't sure if he was going to take it down or not. Uh, it's right close to the curb cut. So I, I think you can see both ways. You know what I mean? See around it. Mm -hmm. It's a big tree. Oh. And it might become. So is it something we would consider, consider later? And then the tree removed. Does he know that he needs to? This yeah, is the town's yeah. right of way. He knows he needs to get the tree warden to look That's at right. it. That's right. So there's a potential. I don't think it's going to affect the curb cut necessarily because site distance is, is okay. Uh, okay. So the next question is: Does it meet the D seventy one standards? He'll have to make it. <coughs> it doesn't right now, but he will have to carve some earth to make that happen. Okay, and when he does that. Okay, so wait a minute. Potential tree removal. Later, contact the tree warden. And then, what does he need to do to improve the site for distance? Just some, just some direction <coughs> as usual. There's quite a lot of brow the hill. All brow that. So low traffic area and it's low speed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on Foster Hill. So it's on the Woodbury side of the hill. It is. Yeah, it's right on that flat. And if you're headed towards Woodbury, just be just past <coughs> Peter's house, Peter Backman's house. Mm -hmm. There's a little knob there. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing that is questionable. But and it's on the so left or right? It's <laughs> on the left. So in order to meet sentence, he's going to have to just cut a little bit of brush. Cut brush to Oops. meet the sight distance. And the sight distance is 300 feet? Yeah. That's what we asked for. Did he buy this lot from Peter Bachman? Yes. Yeah, and his because his Ben's email address is Benjamin at Foster Farm Botanical. So you know, maybe he works there. He does. Yeah. yeah. All right. Is there anything else we need to put on this permit? No. 
Yep, I think so. Okay, so I would make a motion that we approve the curb cut for Benjamin Uris with the conditions as noted on the permit. Okay. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yeah. Say yes, say aye, John. Aye. Aye. I'll send this around for Sean. And Alfred, I will email you a copy of this new permit approval form so that when you're going out on site yeah. visits, you'll have it right there to know yeah. what it means. Yeah, that's good. I can try to help explain it to them as well. Right. Okay. Um, is Grace, did Grace ever get in? Yep, I'm here. Oh, hey, Grace, how are you? Hi, Grace. Hello. And the next two things on our agenda are the East Cal Stormwater Project, the final plans and approval. I didn't have any document to Put in the Google folder, but I think we've pretty much gone over all that, right? Yeah, I think we went over this at the lot the previous meeting. So, Rick or Grace, tell us where we're at with that and what we need to do next. Yeah, so um, at the previous meeting, I just provided an update. I don't have any more current information, but basically, the the final plans have been developed, and the next steps are to wait till the state puts out an RFP for implementation of the project and then CVRPC and the town will coordinate on applying for that. And that's expected within the next couple months, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So you'll let us know when that's ready. So what do you need from us right now? I don't think we need anything from you right now. Just waiting on that um, application to come out. Okay, Rick and Alfred, you're good? Yeah, we're very good. Okay. Yeah. All set? Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, it's just and there's no action that we need to take at this time. We can, no, no, I think we're good until the grant's ready. Okay. So, yeah, that's all okay. right. Next up is the Kent Hill Road culvert grant application. And we're asking CVRPC to tell us what it would cost for them to do the management of this grant. Yes, so I am in communication with Malona McBroom, who did the study back in 2016 about the town hall and the culvert. Um, I haven't received a cost estimate from them for this yet, so I don't have any specific numbers to provide you. But what I can tell you is that the uh, FEMA allows for project management allows a maximum of 5% of the total grant cost. Um, so whatever the budget is, the grant cost, the grant administration, and they call it management costs, those are going to be pretty low no matter what, because it's capped at 5%. But I don't have any specific budget numbers to give you. I Hopefully we'll have one, we'll have a budget by the next select board meeting I would anticipate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I can give you more specifics then. So it sounds like there's not really anything for us to do tonight then, Rick. Right. Great. So, so I can get some clarification, what's, what's the plan? Um, this is the culvert I saw Carlin through email exchange. This is, this is not that one. This, this is, is a different location. This, no, this is the culvert up here by the town hall. Oh, okay. I thought you said apples. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we're yeah, going right, to get right. to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lots of culverts. Different culverts. Yeah. 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 All right. That's the email I forwarded to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. the agenda too. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm, continuing, I'm continuing to work on the application as well. I'm fleshing that out. Um, the 2016 study provides a lot of good information, so... Okay. All right, so there's no action that you need on this at this time, is that right? Yeah, right. So okay. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. And Thank you. Somebody, and one of you, Rick and Grace, you'll let me know when we need to put it back on an agenda for action. Well, should we yes. put it on the next meeting? Do you think we'll have numbers from the Mullen and McBroom? Yeah, so, I, hope, I hope to have numbers from them by then because it is due on the 14th, so it's coming up quick. Okay, yeah, and our next meeting is not until the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want us to, you want us to have it yeah. on the agenda? Yeah, yeah let's do it. And this, yep. and this is the Kendall Road. Right. 
we probably don't need to have the um, uh, the the uh, East Callus on. I don't think that grants. We probably won't see movement by then, will we? No, we probably not. Guess. So we can we'll just do the Kendo. Kendo, okay. When it shouldn't take all that much time, even next at the next meeting, right? It's going to be an no. Item. Right. Yeah. No, it's it going to be an action be item, right? Action. Yeah. It's going to be an action <laughs> item because we want to know how much it's going to cost. <laughs> the management, right? Yeah. The management cost right. for CVRPC to manage the grant, I, and I think it makes perfect sense to have you guys manage it for us. Yeah. If the cost is reasonable. Yeah, and I can also okay. provide at the next meeting, I can provide an estimate for a match because you might recall that there's a 25% match required from the town for FEMA grants. Um, so I'll hopefully have that number as well. Okay. Um, Great. So thank I you. Wanted, I wanted to that. Thank you, Grace. Thanks, Grace. So I just wanted to stop for a moment. We have several people here in the audience that I don't think Katie knows their names. I, your, your page, Paige McGarren. Paige McGarren. How do you spell that page? Uh, P A I G E M C, capital G A H E R A N. Okay, and it's in the email that you sent me that I forwarded to. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I, I know I asked, I think I asked Katie to put that in the folder. So let's see if it's there. Um, yeah, if, if you scroll down, it's, yeah, your email is there. And then you had sent me that one today that I responded to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then we have, um, I remember your name. Yeah. Paul Guerr. Paul Guerr, who here is here, Katie, for the EMFD matter. And Randy Fitch. Yes. Randy Fitch. And I don't know who you are. Jonathan Fitch. Jonathan Fitch, okay. And then you saw Bill Powell, right? Okay, so thank you. We're back on track. So we are on the agenda item of Apple Hill Road Culvers. Yeah, it's on. Mark's asking about the camera. We have this owl camera device here and it directs a rotational camera effect to whoever's speaking, but I pan the audience yeah, to everybody. Right. Okay. Yeah. YouTube land or whatever you call it. So I believe, here. I believe Jordan Keys, who is the son of Paige and Randy and Randy's Jonathan are here to talk about the Apple Hill Road culvert. So I'm gonna let Alfred speak first, then the board can ask questions or make comments and then we'll have an opportunity for others to speak. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, so this culvert has been, or lack of culvert has been a problem for many years. Water sets on the uphill side and it creates a large puddle uh, every time it rains. Is that the one we did a site visit on several years ago? We did a site visit yeah. on. Okay, I remember that. Uh, I installed it. Um, it's a culvert. I, yeah, we put a culvert in across the road. The homeowner at that time didn't want the culvert there, asked it to be removed. Select board ruled to have it moved, removed. That's at the intersection of intersection Apple Hill and Robinson, Robinson Cemetery. Cemetery, right? Just so we're clear. Yeah. So the problem was came back to me again because there's water setting the side of the road. And again, how did the problem come back to you? Something you noticed, or something somebody told you about? Uh, well, I, I've noticed it. I've known it for, for years. It's been a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I had actually Randy asked me to see if we could get that fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as I learned that the property had changed hands, I went and talked to Paige. Uh, to, see, to see if there was a possibility that we could put the culvert back in and control that water. Mm -hmm. And she seemed to be fine. Um, wanted me to talk with Jordan, her son, mm -hmm. who does some engineering on his own. Um, so I did, and he seems to think it's a good idea also. So, but because the select board had ruled 
it to be taken out. Mm -hmm. I felt the need to bring it back to you and no, you're absolutely right. give me, mm -hmm. give me the, the go ahead. Yeah, can I go ahead or can I, do we have to wait? Yeah, you follow the procedure you should have good for you. So given the time of year that we are all facing, um, it's sort of time sensitive. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get this done before. Right. Right and did you talk? I'm, I'm not. Carlin's property is up. She's, she does. She right? she used to own the property. So I purchased the property from her. Okay. She was welcome to Callis, by the way. Thank yeah. you. Thank nice you. to have yeah. you here. Was so, the was the problem that before that the the culvert did drain the water, but it drained onto <coughs> property that didn't want the water. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah. But it doesn't impact any. Structures, I mean, right? So it creates a what if you're turns a yard right. into a swamp. Yeah. Is the is the allegation or the concern? Um, we did look at um, uh, other options, which which they were much more complicated. There's one possibility of ditching down that side of the road in, in front of Paige's house, <coughs> and then putting a cross culvert across to a wooded area, as I recall, this is memory. Right, and that's but the, that's uh, much more involved, and that, that was Barbara McAndrews' land, right? Yeah, that creates Brian problems on its own. It creates problems on its own. It didn't know if you're ditching down part of it to the swamp. Well, no, there's. It was just a. It would have been a roadside ditch to carry the water rather than dumping in someone's yard. Um, so uh, I would say suggest that if we're going to go forward with this. Um, and Paige is okay with it, then we do it. But I think we, there should be uh, an asterisk that if it turns out to be a flood condition situation, that we uh, be open to considering a, a more involved fix. Okay. And this is that's all. Okay. Um, was... you, it, you might lose. It might be not a problem. Or based on what Carlin was saying and her husband were saying that. Maybe it was a particularly wet year, but it, it turned everything wet and it couldn't use that was not a usable section of yard anymore. So I, you know, we, when we went there, I don't know how wet it was. I don't think it was that wet. <laughs> it wasn't that wet. Um, we so, but there was also, there was actually, you could see the channelized flow it was like a drainage way started eroding into the property. So, well, you, we could, like we said, we could put it in. We can put it in. It's the understanding it that if it becomes a problem, we'll. Take it back up again and come up with another option. Yeah, and and this is not to ignore the problem that the pitches had brought up. You know, Randy was there last time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so um, I, I think this is a good time to revisit it anyway. So yeah, all right. So the, does the board have anything else? If not, I'm going to go to the public make a comment. I do. I do have one thing. Yeah. I just want to ask because I haven't been on the site yet. I mean, they said you had a steep grade off of that. What when you said it channelized out of there? I mean, is there was there a lot of slow? It's or? not super steep, and I would actually I plan on putting a pad, a, a catch pool there. Yeah, to catch any pad or something. Uh, yeah, stone line. There's, there's, okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Stone line. Was that catch. there? Was it that? Was it stone line catch pool there before the last time? Yes. Yeah, and it's just yes. still. It was, yeah, it was. Right. Well, they built, they had built a sort of a flat stone wall in front of our culvert, uh, which is still there. And I plan to stay on the road side of right. that yeah. with my catch basin with everything that I do. So the catch basin should catch any sediment. Most rainstorms, the water will stay within that and will just seep in. Um, so I, I really, for the amount of water that's that's there, collecting there is not going to yeah. affect the property below. Well, I think that's what's there after a storm is not the problem. I think it's as the storm keeps feeding that area, that becomes a place it collects, and then it it overflows into the culvert. I guess we'll just see. Yeah, um, it's we an ongoing it. problem. We know that, but I just want to make sure we're not shifting one problem from one place to another. That's right. all. I think that's so what I'm hearing is at least the sentiment is that we go ahead with the understanding that if there's a problem, we will reconsider. Right. Right. So right. Okay. But let's hear from, let's make sure we hear from the public and then we can put in our minutes what you just let's said. hope it all works out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jordan, I'm going to ask you to make a comment if you'd like. Uh, thank, thank you. I appreciate that. Can everybody hear me? 
okay? Yep, yes, yep. Great. Um, well, calling myself an engineer is generous, but I, I do have some experience with the types of uh, earth moving. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I did meet with, um, with Alfred on site and uh, discuss the, the catch basin and, uh, and everybody's kind of representation of those conversations is accurate. You know, we don't want to get in the way of uh of of mitigating the issue as it stands um and have a uh a full history of uh of, of trying to mitigate that in the past it, it does sound like the uh stone lined a modest stone lined catch basin um uh would would likely address uh current storm water events um the only caveat to that uh, that i shared with alfred um and discussed with my mother who's the current property owner um is that you know should storm water events get more intense um and because this particular catch basin isn't necessarily going to have an outlet um that you know if if we do have an issue that we um have the cooperation of the uh road commissioner to um to address it further uh, with a with a more substantial solution, which is going to require uh, you know cooperation on on both sides of the of the dialogue, you know, to ditch all the way down Robinson Cemetery and make sure that that water gets to basically the swamp where it wants to go without necessarily having to go through anybody's property unnecessarily. Um, Across the road, that's yeah, the right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jordan. Page. Thank you. Um, no, um, I think he uh, clearly addressed it. Um, I've had conversations with Alfie too, and uh, um, thank you for being open to and sensitive to me as a new property owner in the event that this is not a permanent solution that we will work together to see one. So um, just out of curiosity, how long was the culvert in before? Ten minutes. It wasn't long. <laughs> it wasn't long. <laughs> wasn't long. <laughs> wasn't long. <laughs> a week, maybe two weeks. Like right. So there wasn't really time to assess whether or not it was a problem, a, a solution, a problem. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yes. Okay, Randy. I, I just came to the forest and was up. Basically, the safety issue. I'm almost the head of the forest. Because people avoid the water is halfway. Oh, water. I see what you mean. The browning. Yeah. And I've always, you know, fed trucks. My neighbors, which I don't want to mention. You <laughs> know, it's just about, I just, it's been close. Yeah. Okay. And it's just been a hazard since it was taken away. Okay. It also yeah. destabilizes the road itself. You know, there's that stand of water there. So yeah. it's in some basin. Yeah, it's just a big one over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I just want to, for the record, to note um, that we received an email from Carolyn True, and she um, objects to us putting in this culvert. And you all had the opportunity to read her. I don't think she email. objected. I think she was concerned about the new property owners. Mm -hmm. She's not aware of the the back of the no, dialogue. It's, it's she did says, not object. It says the folks that are proposing this reinstallation should be ashamed of their lack of empathy and consciousness of what it means to be a respectful neighbor. Right, because she was not aware of the conversation. She that thought that we were just going to say, okay, Carlin sold it, so now we're going to stick it in. and you know, the league or the new neighbors. So that's not okay. She's this actually a clear misunderstanding and a lack of communication. But have you talked to Carolyn? Um she sent me an email and she became aware um, she's on this this was on the agenda. Okay. Um she was not aware and that I have already been in Jordan and I've already been in communication with the road department. So she was reaching out to say hey this is on the agenda. This was something that happened. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so um, I think you have approval to move forward with it documented that if this becomes an issue with the um, Mark, do you want to say what you said before? If it becomes minute. an issue because of the pooling of water on that property, bring it back to us. Yeah, we'll, we'll revisit it. With the proposed proposals. Yeah. So, and Jordan very articulately uh, acknowledged that's exactly what we were talking about. In the alternative, it was a much more involved project. And actually, at that point in time, we didn't have even time to really get into it. It was a great time. But yeah. um, that's something that this becomes a problem or it doesn't work, we could look, look to doing something else. We'll have Jordan design it for us. <laughs> I have charge. I don't, I don't know that the state would sign off on anything like that, but. <laughs> okay. Well, it's so nice to meet you, Paige and Jordan. Welcome to Calus. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, of course. Resident, has been for some years. So it's taken oh, me. but he comes to visit mom and dad. He comes to well, visit mom. What? We're we're oh. property owners up on Bain Camoli as well. So we're future Calus residents. I live on Bain Camoli Road. Yeah, we uh so oh, I'm um, part of the collective oh, that uh, purchased the uh um, don't want to go there. Where where yeah. is, where's your property on Bain Camoli? Uh, it's, it's uh right next to uh Jody's uh property. So we're I, I'm not sure we actually have an address yet, but okay. Well, um, welcome to Bain Holy Road. It's a good group on our road. It is a good group. Yeah, yeah. plenty yeah. of earth movers on that road too. There's a lot of them, and they drive by my house every day way too fast. So just put that. Just remind them. Uh, we right, will. So, all right. So moving on. Um, ash trees. You talked to Neil, correct? Okay. Yes. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, and I think it works out well because you just got the new chip out. And you're going to be going around. Well, yeah. Some we were, cutting. I was talking to him about some other trees and whatnot. And during the conversation, it's like, I'm going to be using the chipper. And why not do the ash trees while we're there, or at least some of the ones that are manageable? Um, so. He and I knew that there was no nothing organized through the select board for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we are. Yeah. We you know, need direction for how you want to proceed with that. Well, Neil's the tree warden, so I think if he identifies what can be cut, um, and I would, and we can circle back with Neil, but I think Neil should post something on front porch forum so that when people see these ash trees being cut, they don't get all upset about it. Right. Well, I think that's that's sort of what we need to do. Is, right. You know, because Neil is saying that all ash trees should go because they're a liability. They're soon going right. to be a hazard tree. Yeah. We need to do it. So my stance is that I would like to do it while I'm there. Right, if you're out so cutting I've brush. Got equipment there, right. I've got I've got the machine, I can do it do it all while I'm there. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to freak create. people out right. and create, you know, animosity. Are these, are these trees, these are not diseased yet. Right. Are they? It's it's they are most likely to catch this disease. Yeah, I know, but they're no, are they, are are the bigger ones still timberable? Yeah, yeah. So they when we cut them, what it's do we the, do? It's the landowner's tree. So it's another thing that I suppose I would have to organize is communicate with the landowner. Where do you want this? What do you want to mm -hmm. do with it? But you can only cut it if it's in the right way. You yeah. can cut it upon the landowner's land. Right. right. But, but there are a lot of trees right. uh, that are in the right way right. of that of that size, of that log, log yep. size. Yep. yep. So that would be something that I would have to communicate with each landlord or landowner to mm -hmm. see what they want to do with it. Most of them are going to say, don't want it, don't, you know what I mean? Or they're going to put it in the firewood. Yeah. Maybe their brother or their nephew or somebody may want, I don't know. That's all things that will have to be worked on. Worked on and worked out. I mean, most of the time we just cut it into <laughs> sizable pieces and leave it beside the road. Mm -hmm. 
And that's for them to decide what they do. Right. Now, if it's just brush, tiny stuff, you'll just brush will go through the chipper, chipper and we'll be, you'll never see it again. Well, until it grows again. But, <laughs> okay. um, and that's another thing that, you know, there are going to be some places around town that we can't just chip it out into the woods. We will have to load it. Mm -hmm. So there will be another list of people that are going to be interested in the chips. Right. Are, are you going to stockpile them at the town garage? I would rather not uh, stockpile them because then you've got people wanting us to load them. You got people wanting right. to come at all different hours. So I think it would be a list that somebody if they would put their name on the list. We would bring it to them if we yeah. if we had a load. So that's on your plate. It'd be or cool if we you want to volunteer to do that. It would be great if we could. <laughs> I mean, I would. Yeah, but I mean, I somebody, no, somebody will have to do it. Yeah. And, you know, and yeah. some people will just, you know, if it's their land, they're going to want the chips. Right. Same as they're going to want the And they have, first, they have first choice, obviously, because right. their property. I mean, most places, the ideal situation would be that I could just blow it out in the woods right. and never touch it again. But some places there's going to be lawn, there's going to be you know, right. you can't just right. pull it. So, okay, so, so you've coordinated with Neil, which is good. And we're going to ask, we can circle back with Neil and ask him to do a posting a front porch for him as the tree warden saying this is what's going to happen. You would be the contact person. Yeah. Right? John, comments, uh, thoughts? Yeah, well, I just, this, this begs another. You know, question idea that I've had in my mind for a number of years, and I, I really think, added to the list of things to do, I really think the town needs to find a piece of land that where we can stockpile sand, where we could stockpile chips on this side of town, yeah. or a little, even further toward Worcester. Mm -hmm. So if Alfred doesn't have someone to take chips, he's not hauling it, you know, mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, and likewise with sand or other material we could stockpile and if people want to go pick up chips they can go pick up from that stockpile that I just no, I agree feel like you. if we had a piece of three acre piece of land or a 10 acre piece even that would be great and I think we should we rise a, up open. we have a time and I've thought of this over the years but uh, town forest on county road by step, there's a there's an access that goes up in there. In on Long Meadow, Long Meadow Road. Uh, no, it's off of County Road. It goes Where? Yeah. Right by Scott Stories. Really, we own forest over there. I think so. Isn't it the the Old West Church Forest that goes through there? Where is the Scott? Scott? I mean, and where is Scott Stories? Bliss Pond. What do they call it? Bliss Pond. Town Forest. There's Bliss Pond. Town yeah, Forest. there's that forest. Oh, you're talking about that forest. Yeah, but I believe I may be wrong, but yeah. I believe there's an access from the county road that gets gets you up into that property. Really? Huh. Can you check On it out? So I thought that was all behind Stan Morse's farm. Form. Right, but that's all sort of relative in there. It's all in that. Right. I don't know where that access up county road is. Well, there's a trail on Old West Church Road. Yeah. Right. A hiking trail. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. that land go right straight through over think, to the I, county road? I think that's Stan Morse's property, which is now owned by David Nash. I don't know what that's that, that I think the forest ends. I don't think his land goes that far. This is way down <laughs> in the side. <laughs> well, we can right. We find should out. find out. Yeah. yeah. The point is it's a great idea. We should yeah. definitely yeah. have a place to dump John, stumps. You? Trips, dirt. Yeah, John, can you still? check it out? No. Thank you. John will check it out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, just <laughs> again, yeah, I, I think that I've always been under the impression that that's our access, but it's never been utilized. Yeah. So, okay. if, so we'll want it is our access, or if we have a right away up to yeah. there, I would have no problem. Well, so you. of course we town forest according to our. Policy we it says in there the charge of the conservation commission is they they manage our town force so we we figure it out and then we'll go talk with the conservation right commission. yeah yeah absolutely you don't want to just start dumping stuff on well no we'll want to find another piece of property then just saying well or no or maybe that's not an area of it I, I I'm just actually in my mind's eye I can't 
can't see, see that forest going there. Can't see the forest for the trees. I, I, because I've walked through there. I don't know where that is. Well, maybe you guys could take a site visit, the two of you, and then report back. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'm not clear as to where the, the forest property lines are. Yeah. But. Okay. So, Katie, the minutes are going to reflect that Alfred and but we should. John are going to coordinate going and looking at the site and seeing what they can figure yeah, out. The other thing is the Pelchucks still have that property. Black Rock Coal. Yeah. Black Rock Coal. And they're looking to sell the quarry, I yeah. think, still. Yeah. But there's a lot of property ahead of the quarry. Is that I actually hay a field back there. Is that Kent Morse's property? It was no, it's 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 owned by the Pelchucks. They bought it from Stanley okay. some 20 years ago or more. And so there might be an option there too where they would you know just, just putting that out there. I really think makes we're long sense. overdue. It makes sense. We're burning diesel fuel, we're wearing out trucks, we're wasting tires. valuable labor that we don't have available oh. anymore. Well, Never it's also really tires, did. oil, gas. Yeah, it's just just mm -hmm. it's wrong at it uh, you know we used to before the clerk's office was right, built, there was, there a, garage was a, there. a garage there and there was an area we could have done work there yeah not now i don't know how much land still available there either no we opened it up to drew lamb i don't know if there's a plateau we could access there even but that getting would be harder yeah than a Pelcha <laughs> property but okay. so anyway so just putting that out there just Good, good this idea. Reminds me of that. I know you've brought it up before, so yeah. I mean, what wouldn't it be great if, if Alfred, instead of like if neighbor doesn't side? want something slipper, the neighbor doesn't neighbor who's getting this, these trees removed didn't want them, but we were then there are people who want firewood, you know, and they're mm -hmm. buying their I see log length being just yeah, they're paying yeah. for log length to be dropped in their dooryard. And if the stuff was already bucked up and people would go pick it up. Whatever that would be a great service to the folks in town, mm -hmm. yeah. Particularly people who are struggling, and you know, as we were and, saying and earlier, things are gonna things get worse, are, yeah. Gonna get worse, so. yep. All right, sounds good. Okay. Thank All you. right, so are we ready to move on to EMFD? Do you have anything else, Alfred? Nope, everything good. Okay, well, call me, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, very good. Thank you. Thanks, Alfred. Thank you. Let us know how you make out with the. Yes, you both. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hear you across. Mine too. Yeah. And my toes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, Katie, Larry Brown from EMFD just joined us as well. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Well, thank you for getting us on your schedule. Oh, sure. Yeah. And thank you for Let's your. Go. Thank you for your note yeah. and asking to speak with us. I know yeah. you've already met with. East Montpelier, and they approved um, from their end, right. they approved the um, purchase. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah. it? So, I what think. what we're looking for is permission to withdraw the funds for this auto loader in, in uh, installation of it. Um, I brought Larry with me. He's going to talk about you know the auto loader itself, how it works. The change changing in the uh, dynamics of the of fire service that we're going through, the reasons why we want to get this on the way. Isn't he's that more, he's more able to talk about it than I am? Isn't that something that you've showed us when we've been at the fire department? One of those automatic they lift themselves. Didn't you show us that? Well, we've showed you the stretcher before, which is taken. We have a power load stretcher. And the next evolution in ambulance work all around the country is the power stretcher allows us to put a patient on it and lift the patient up to the height of the ambulance. And then we put the patient in the ambulance, lift the stretcher, put them in the ambulance, secure them, and away we go. The power lift system is from Stryker, the same place that we bought the power stretchers from. And I've got a little video here, which I can show you so you can actually see it. But just a quick background, and I used the month of October last month for the staffing of the fire department and ambulance. So each month we have 98 hour shifts to staff at the fire station. Those are shifts that um, are staffed by two people to have full time coverage, advanced life support coverage for the towns of Dallas, East Montpelier, the other two towns we serve. In the last month of October, 60 of the 90 shifts are covered with by female employees. 
So what I'm simply saying is the stretcher itself weighs with the oxygen bottle and the equipment weighs 175 pounds. Wow. So if I was, uh, I was going to bring the ambulance over tonight just to let you experience loading and unloading the stretcher. And then I was going to take some lightweights like myself and John and three of us and sit on the stretcher simulating four or 500 pounds and have you lift it. And you're going to see if I can lift it, right? That's what would that's what it would be to have the team as well. Okay. Now with the, new, with, the new, with the new power system, you could do it. Yeah. One person could lift it. I know you demonstrated the one at the fire station to us, and that was really nice. Um, I don't we've never really had the power lift system unless you were there with about two and a half, three years ago. Yeah. Stryker brought it over in the demo. A van. Yeah, I remember you something us. you showed us one time. So it it will. I've got a, a short video of it here. But what this what the power unit allows us to do is, if we get on call and we pick up a three or four hundred pound person, any one of the members on the department, whether it's a hundred and thirty five pound female or it's a hundred and sixty five pound guy or two hundred pound guy, they can lift that person safely to them with basically one finger. It's a no it's a hydraulic lift. And it also is the state of the art for securing the stretcher in the ambulance in case of an accident. Uh, right now, what we have is a horn system where when the stretcher is picked up and rolled in, there's two U-shaped brackets. The back of the stretcher slides up into the brackets. And then as we slide the stretcher to a locking mechanism, it's just a U-bolt. And when the stretcher has a pin, like a nader bar, it pin it hits it, it locks the stretcher. That's all that's holding the stretcher in. With this power load system, once the stretcher is placed in the ambulance, two arms pick it up and lock onto the stretcher. It goes down like a track, like an I beam track, and it's one handed put in and it's locked. And that's that. Uh... Right there, right? that's a, the track right there, right? Uh, that's the track in the back, correct? Those are the two arms. Those are the two arms that lift the American up. So, how do you get somebody that onto that? So, we've had various situations in the past month or two of lifting big people, and we have some big people in our service area. So, the I the, the biggest part is to get the person off the stretcher. Once we have them on the stretcher, we now can handle them. If we have somebody recently, we had somebody that weighed over 600 pounds. Oh, so that's a bariatric patient. It was about a 650 plus pound person. And that was a challenge to get that person off the floor. Onto the stretcher. And then try to get into the stretcher. Now, <coughs> you don't you know, have anything to help lift, I remember. Not on the floor in the house. Right. So what happened with that particular person, we found out that there are no ambulance services in central Vermont or the district that have the capability of lifting a patient like that. We wound up um, with six or seven people getting that patient off the floor with vinyl type, what we call the mega movers, and we were able to lift them to a chair. Now, we, once we got into a chair, that patient, um, we had to do a medical assessment, which we did, I did the medical assessment, and we had to communicate with the hospital not to transport him out of his home until the next day. And we had to arrange for Burlington to send down FACT, which is the big mobile transport unit, and they're equipped to handle bariatric patients. Their stretcher is probably a $25,000 stretcher, which will hold up to 1,600 pounds. And in their ambulance, they have a, a winch system. So when we brought that here to one of the towns to load this person, mm -hmm. we literally hired a flatbed wrecker that came in and we could not get the person out of his house because of just the way that that person was able to walk to the door. And from the door, we had the stretcher on the flatbed truck, put them on the stretcher, moved the flatbed out and lowered it down with the winch. 
Once we had it on the ground, they were able to move it towards the ambulance, hook a winch onto a literal winch, electric winch in the ambulance, put down steel tracks and winch the person into the ambulance. Wow, with, the, with this system here, uh, my son works for Barrytown Ambulance Service. They have one of these systems in their ambulances. They recently, in the past couple of weeks, moved a person out of a hardwood area that was over 600 pounds. That person was able to walk to the stretcher, the same identical stretcher we have. That stretcher is rated for 700 pounds of patient. When it's on the ground, it's rated for 870 pounds. When I lifted two feet to get in the ambulance, it's rated at 700. So they were able to get the person and on that crew was my son and a female, 64 year old female nurse that works right there. Mm. They were able to get that person on the cot, roll it to the ambulance, put it into the two lifting arms and with the push of one button hydraulics picked that 600 pulse pound person up and one hand put him into the ambulance. Wow. So what it does for us in a nutshell, we are coming across these cases all the time. More and more people were transporting in 300, 400 or bigger. The majority of our staff are female and it's it's a tough lift for anybody to lift. Uh, even for, I've been in work for a long time and even the strongest guys on the department, it's a tough lift. So unloading, it's just a reverse. So unloading, that's all they do is it's a one hand operation, one person. They pull the stretcher, release a button. The stretcher comes straight up and suspended right there. Mm -hmm. And it's holding 870 plus wow. the overload capacity straight out. One push of the down button, the negative or the plus button lowers the wheels. Once the wheels touch the ground, you push the button a second longer, the two hydraulic arms release. Mm -hmm. And you move your patient out on the wheels. So you said you had a video. How long is that? It's only a couple minutes. And I can see if it will play here. That's what I'm just curious about. There is internet, yeah, you may have but it's unstable. <coughs> the more people that sign on to the internet, the more unstable it gets. I'm not sure it'll. The device has maximum safe working load of 870 pounds, 395 kilograms, which includes. Yeah. Yeah. Any equipment attached to the cot, such as oxygen bottles, monitors, or pumps, power load meets SAE J3027 dynamic crash test standards and minimizes patient drops by supporting the cot until the wheels are on the ground. The Striker power load is designed to be fully compatible with cots that have the power load compatibility option or kit. There's one required operator for an unoccupied cot and two operators for an occupied cot. Practice first with an unoccupied cot. Follow the guidelines in the operations and maintenance manual to ensure you have everything needed for installation. You should make sure the battery is fully charged before the first use and before training with the equipment. Finally, have a qualified person. Yeah, the internet. Is, I think we got a good idea. Yeah. So let me ask you something. This is your working to buy one, but aren't there three ambulances? We have two ambulances. Um, we're looking to purchase one now for the newer ambulance. Uh, the other ambulance is 15 years old, I think, and it's not worth putting one into it at this time. We use the ambulance as a backup and one is primary. So one ambulance gets used. So the one that would have this would be primary. That's what we would And you would just for. use this all the time. We'd use right? it 99% of the time and yeah. it goes in for maintenance or service and then the backup, and same as we do now. We rotate in the winter time. Uh, we've been using the older ambulance in the winter to save the new one, but this is... Well, it won't be anymore. With this ambulance, with this system in the ambulance that we've had, I think on that brochure, it even tells you at the end, if somebody had one back injury, the cost to yeah. the town or yeah. to the department for a back injury, that's... Right, a workman's comp. What is the cost of this loss of person? Paul's yep. got the numbers. Yep. Um, it's, yeah, it's right here on the... Yeah, we got more of an update from since I sent you that. Oh, the estimated yeah. amount. The uh, the unit itself come in around twenty one thousand. Uh, the installation, but also we learned that uh, it's it was advisable to get a service contract on it. Yeah, that makes sense. So we're we're up around twenty seven to twenty eight, and we uh, Eastmont Player said you probably should go to thirty for some 
unforeseen expenses. Right, and then amount to not to exceed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's the way yeah. that they yeah. worded it. Yeah. Yeah. Because a service a, contract I thought was uh, important to have. You know what? I think they went away. Um, so I guess we'll just carry on. This happens every meeting about this time. It's, it's working. It's your So, Katie, we lost the Zoom on this computer. Yes, just just as you guys were watching the video. Hold on. There we go. Sorry. Go ahead, Katie. Yep, we we only lost you just as you were watching the video that EMFD presented. I know. Can we, can we continue this way, or Denise, do you are you going to log back on? Um, you know, we're almost through the agenda items. We can, if everybody's good, we can just finish up this way. Let's do that. Let, yeah. let me know, Denise, if you want me to screen share anything for the folks on Zoom, okay? What? Just let me know mm -hmm. if you want me to screen share anything that y'all are looking at. I could do the screen sharing for the people on Zoom. Oh, okay. I don't know if you saw, if you were on Zoom, you saw what was up before the video was on. So right now I'm looking for a motion to authorize the EMFD to, per and I guess I'll make a motion, authorize EMFD to purchase the striker auto loader um, and service agreement in an amount not to exceed $30,000. And it would be withdrawn from the EMFD capital fund. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion or comment questions? Anybody in the audience? No. I'd like to thank and Mary and well, Paul for coming out. Well, let's vote. Yeah. Let's vote. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. We Thank really you. appreciate you keeping us so in the we, we get it, we'll bring it back to demonstrate or at the next we well, know our, our meeting in December is on um, December second, right? And uh, first Thursday in December. Will you have it then? Oh, okay. Um, it's five to six weeks yeah. after we. Is were. it on a boat out in California somewhere? It could be. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it could be yeah. a long beach somewhere. Right. Yeah. Thank you well, so much. You and as always, we appreciate Thank everything you. you do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, we are moving along with WEC. And. We have Bill Powell. Come join us, Bill. Thank you. And so, by the way of introduction, uh, thank you for putting your right on the agenda. You're welcome. And I think Barry Bernstein is still on the Zoom. Yeah, he's so there. I'll thank him for making this initiative. Um, I Who guess is? I, I come as a WAC representative, but I also want to talk to CD to answer your question. Do you have any questions about what we can do that you should answer? This is to get high speed internet to the town office, to the hall. And I guess there's a few houses on Kentall Road. Right. What I'm trying to do here is give you a better sense of what WEC is doing in this town and 40 other towns. Because right, but this is not that. I, I get confused if you start talking about the green fiber project no, and this not. project. This is a separate project, right? Well, in this case, it's a CD project. Okay. And so the big picture is WEC is providing fiber 100% access is the, is the mission mm -hmm. over time. Right. And in each of the 41 towns where there's a CV, we have three of them that we're working with. CV fiber happens to be ours. Right. You know, and every every CV has its own agenda, its own track record so far, and um, financial capabilities. Uh, some AC, one of the CVs is, is solid and, and very much in business. Central Alliance has, has uh, just received a major grant. And is you know in the early stages, and that grant money cannot be put into place for it's called pre-construction, but that is not anything that will actually provide a retail service. So I, I just wanted to you know share any information that you may have questions about, but other than making a distinction, the project to bring fiber to our neighbors to the office is a CUD project, and we've been helping move that ball. 
mm -hmm. with our Velco partners. And right now the project is up at the Kent corner heading for the substation. So, you know, I guess I want Barry, if he's got any thoughts to weigh in because Barry's really the champion for moving this through this town and others mm -hmm. with our senior partners. Um, but negotiations are still underway. Uh, there are no contracts that are signed with the CD partners. The gap is closing. We've been at this for three mm -hmm. years. And again, Barry gets full credit for, for being a champion on this project. But, um, you know, I don't want to take Dave Healy's thunder from him because uh, he was here with me on the, on the 11th. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the ask then was uh, that the ARPA money would be available for this project. And you quite properly indicated that you're going to wait for the DLCT to kind of set the standard and do it to a right. Process. It's yeah, as they told us, it's a marathon, not a sprint. But the project that we're looking at tonight and the one that we have money budgeted for in the budget was ten thousand dollars. There was going to be an estimate for this particular piece of the bigger the bigger project. Well, let's put a let's put a distance. The town off, right? And the estimate is about thirty thousand okay. dollars, of which the town has already made a significant effort, but you're not close to it. I think more importantly, um, even if the money was here and the cable was up, we still have to light the cable, and that's not happening. That's expected by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to tee it up that we're, we're pushing this quite quickly, right? And the CD has an active role and they ultimately will be the agent at, at your at the street level mm -hmm. you know, bring the service in from the road to the property so what i'm trying to get at is what we're here to approve tonight is this project that's from the kent museum down ken hill road to the town hall to the town office and the estimate is roughly thirty thousand dollars is that right okay so that's what I'm trying to get at tonight so that we can make a decision on that piece because I understand that it's ready, you know, you need the money for this project. Is that correct? Well, it's all the time needed because right. the contractors are right in our neighborhood right. mobilized and we're all interested to see what happens. Right. So I guess what I'm looking for is the board to make a decision tonight to authorize the expenditure of up to whatever amount we decide. To make this project happen, we have ten thousand dollars already in the budget. Our budget is in very good shape. We have a very good fund balance going forward. <clears throat> so, if we were to authorize this amount, it would come out of our existing budget because we're not ready to tap into the ARPA funds. Once we start tapping into the ARPA funds, then we open up this door of all this record keeping and everything that we would need to do and the ARPA funds is something that we need to take some time <coughs> to learn more about. I, we, I had a Zoom meeting with Katie at the LCT and um, Grace Vincent from CBRPC and they're saying take your time. So we want to get this project done not using ARPA funds right. until, we're, until we're ready to. But is it 30 or 10? It's still the same. That it's roughly thirty thousand. We are budgeted last year ten thousand dollars, anticipating that there might be an opportunity like this. So we would have had some twenty thousand. We, uh, we have a really good fund balance, and we're on target budget-wise. There are expenses that haven't happened and, and probably won't. So I'm, I would. I think feel, Barry's chiming in. Oh, from, I, I would from. feel. That very, I would feel very comfortable authorizing 30 or not to exceed 35 to make this project happen. Is that a motion? Well, I want to hear from Barry first, but okay. it would be a motion. You can go ahead and make your motion and I can speak after whatever you want. I just, just so everybody's clear, the reason this is important now is we got the contractor at Kent Corner. It's going to be the least expensive we can possibly do it is do it when somebody's in place. You're right that up to 35,000, we, we haven't got a fixed number from the contractor. What this will do will provide that dark fiber, that, that fiber to the town clerk's office. And then that will allow CV fiber, hopefully when you are able to give some ARPA money to them, but with their other grant money also, uh, to connect high speed to you, which from talking to David, may be the end of the year, it may be 
early March. I don't know. But it, the fact that this is happening is great because it's been a promise for so many decades in this state. And with the CUDs and WEX help, we're going to try to get all of this done, Callus and all of the other 41 towns. And that, that, that's the bigger project. I want to right, focus right. on just no. getting done so we don't... You're get... right. You're, you're right. Third, not to exceed 35000 would be for the yeah. Kent Corner to the town clerk's office for dark fiber through WEC would be great. Barry, does that mean that every select board meeting, the internet's not going to go out? Every select board meeting around this time, the internet has. Well, it's not the internet, out. Denise. It's this is our local, your computer, because mine's not going out. Which makes no sense. It's your computer. <laughs> it's that. Okay. All right. So I made a motion um, to approve the what? What do we want? What are we calling this project? The Kent Hill or the town office? Fiber? The town off high speed fiber to be. It's just strong, strong, strong. strong. installed, deployed, deployed and lit, deployed and lit. I like that. The lit part will fall on the ice, and the CUD is about a week away from that. Will be that is, but ultimately, yes, you got it right. So okay, so I'm making a motion that we approve the deployment of fiber from Kent Hill Museum down to the town. Office. Ken Hill substation, right? April corner. No. no, it's coming from Kent Corner to the town town office. Uh, and this is for to pay WEC to do that. That's and it's amount not to exceed thirty-five thousand dollars. A second there. Any further discussion or comment? Dave Dave. Oh, sorry, Mark. A couple of questions. Um, Is there any concern that we're singling it, we're using taxpayer funds to single out our own needs? Well, I think it's, it's really needed at the town office for them to just do their work. We, we had been considering last year spending upwards of $87,000 through Comcast, right? To Comcast consolidated. In, consolidated, right? To install a line from Route 14 all the way to here and actually could have been higher. That was an estimate. And then they would then, that line that we paid for in full, they would then be able to charge other people to go onto a line that we paid for but didn't own. Um, so, I, you know, I know as one select board member, I was not very happy no, with that. No, and and I opposed it vehemently and we did do it. No, we shot it down. And, uh, we did catch some grief from folks, but. Um, so this is the better option, and it wasn't one that was available then, um, although it was speculated to. And it's part of a bigger build-out project that is going to benefit everybody. Right. The 35000 or whatever it ends up being, if it's less than that, is for the deployment of the line. It's the main bus. It's not connecting it to us. That has to happen with CB Fibers. Contractor, that won't be done, but okay. Just, Wait. To, just to give this a little more picture, so if you look outside of the corner, the, the line terminates on a pole on this side, and then it runs underground to the town office. So it's that stretch, that underground stretch, that is the future. And if there's enough in the 35 to do it, obviously that's pretty good. David would act would say if you were talking about customer premise equipment, about 15 to 17 hundred. So, so we should. We so at? if the contract, if the contractor is already going to be there, would, it could possibly be the same contractor that would install that later yeah, on. The retail. So I'm trying to make a distinction between the guy that puts the line in the air, right? Puts the splices and the and the spare loops in, and then the last guy who actually brings the pipe and goes. But I was wondering if that guy could run the line underground to their office and then they could do the connection. I can't speak for that. So I would like your motion please to be made more flexible. I'd like a friend to make John Brabant make a friendly amendment to Denise's motion, I think seconded by Rick, to um, allow for an additional expenditure as necessary to continue the line from the pole just off the corner of town, the town hall here, and 
across the road, whether it's underneath or above or whatever, to the town office so that if the contractors are there and facilitating that at that time would save us money or time and money um, that we could do have that uh, option available to us. Does that make sense, Bill? Well, <laughs> also suggest, um, since I assume there's very conduit for power and there's very conduit for calm. And you probably you could have space in the calm conduit for a strand. That might be a good thing. Or you may have to do something separate. And another issue, if it had to be separate, would it be you guys have the right of way permit for that project. Right. Mm -hmm. so you guys can name it. right. If they're going to bury it under the ground, we have, well, we have to. Are, if they could just pull it to existing conduit, I, I don't believe you can run fiber optic through. A power line no, no, it's got to be a separate conduit so so we have to find that out yeah, whatever size con conduits in there there may be enough spare room and and lighting it up and whatever you call it is included in this price no that's isp yeah isp is going to be named shortly so I, I see a convergence here okay so we'll have to do another well expenditure. this is the infrastructure or when we do approve it um, I, I can't speak for the total cost. I mean, we're, we're flying blind here. Yeah. This is estimate by someone else who may not even want to do the job because they're busy like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, like I said a couple of minutes ago, they would use a bogey of uh, 1500 bucks when mass drop. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm using that as a, as not a budget, but an estimate for what that would cost. So I wonder this amount <laughs> Does not include the final connection. Right. Unless unless there's money left over yeah. from that budget so, amount. If not, they'll have to come back to us. So we'll have to I think there's it. three parts. There's this part that Bill is Bill is here about. There's the part I spoke to, which is taking it from where Bill Bill's project would end and bring it to the office. And then there's the third leg. And that's the finer final connection. The lighting from out. No, no, the final connection from outside the office, bringing wire into the office, and that be it. You know, they're not. I'm just suggesting they put the power over onto that side, and make it available to be connected to the office. That's what I'm suggesting. Now, maybe they would just run it and hang it off the side of the building, but underground service on the pole and on the other side. Right. For anything to come aerial. Right, and you don't want to do that because you right. avoided that. Right, so we're just I'm just making it so we have that option. Okay, okay. so John yeah. made a friendly amendment, which I accept. Okay. All right, are you ready to vote? Rick is yes. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a long time. I just. Oh, wait a minute, Katie. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank evening, guys. Thanks. Bye bye. Can I ask I have a question about the original motion. Yeah. It's for an amount not to exceed $35,000. Do you want the minutes to reflect that that $35,000 is the 10,000 that was in the FY22 budget and the rest to come from the budget? The rest of it to come from our existing budget. Thank you. And thank you, Katie. All right, um, we're almost done. We have, one, we have one, one more thing. Tracy, I see Tracy there. Are you there, Tracy? Hi, uh, everyone. Yeah. There she is. Thank you, Tracy. Um, all set? Now, can you get her? She's well. She Tracy's right there. No, she's on. This one. Yeah, John, can you turn your computers off? Okay, Rick and Bill. All right. Um, Tracy has. I think. You, I think Stephanie said you had been attending. You had attended some uh, conservation commission meetings, and I know she's been looking to have you be appointed, and you have agreed to do so. You have a background in. Um, what did you say you have a background in? I'm a wetland and wildlife biologist for professionally. Oh, do you work for the state? No, I work for a consulting firm. I've been in consulting for almost a decade. 
Um, but I have a master's degree in conservation biology and an undergraduate degree in environmental science as well. Well, welcome to Calis. And Thank you. We're very excited to be here. Apple Hill. We're on Apple Hill. Uh, just when you start to go up, when you come from Maple Corner. <clears throat> we're, we're 643. Okay, is that is that the class four road? No. Yep. Yep, right where it starts. Right where the class four road starts, okay. All right, um, and the conservation terms are four years. There's several that are currently vacant. So we would appoint you to fill a vacant position which term expires in 2022. But then okay. we do re but when then we do appointments after town meeting, we would reappoint you if you were, you know, wanted to be to a <laughs> four year term. Okay, sounds and then, perfect. And then we got you. <laughs> and then I'm here forever. <laughs> okay, so I would make a motion that we appoint Tracy Sunhalter, is that how you say it? You got it, like yep. To the Conservation Commission to fill a vacant 2022 term. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye. Boy, we are done. Thanks, oh. everyone. Well, I should have put more. Welcome, I should have put more Thank on you. the agenda. I should have put more on the agenda. <laughs> I should have. I should have. Should have. Should All right, Katie, are you all set? I don't think there's anything more to, to do tonight. It's so nice to meet you. Pleasure yeah, to meet you. Paige. Nice meeting you, Paige. Paige. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. So, Paige, uh, are you interested in holding a position? Town government? <laughs> Ser that's a serious question. Um, the serious answer is I'm not here full time. I don't feel like uh, I could serve. Okay. You know what? There may be some. Nothing, nothing that gives her son any extra to do's uh, until all of his projects are done. Still well, we, we were going to put Katie as chair of the Bridges and Culverts Committee. <laughs> oh, Paige. Oh, I see. Um, I don't know if how that would involve you. You're a consultant engineer for the town. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Yes, so All right. All those in favor, aye. aye. Thank aye. you.